if we understand that Bakuma were no different from at least the majority of unconquered East African Bantu, then we will understand that obviously their language, their customs, and their traditions would be no different from East African Bantu before conquering. Why would I say that? Because if we look at Burundi, Banyawanda, peoples of Uganda, if we just simply study their language and simply understand that Bakuma said they came from Uganda, I heard a Hebrew brother said that their people came from Canaan, Can- Canaan, and some places over in the middle. Brother, stop that. Brother Nasi, stop that. Our people knew exactly where they came from, Uganda, Chad, and all of those places. They never said that they came from anywhere differently. So, y'all, you know, brothers is teaching this and sisters is teaching. Otherwise, stop that. Because if we look at the term Metuneter, well, where was it found? What was in the land? What is the oldest monument on Earth Mother? That's what you call the Sphinx. That's what you call Horm Akit, the oldest monument. And it was carved out of a mountain. So they couldn't have taken the mountain from one place and brought it to, you know, Chicoma and then carved it out and created a lion with a human head. They couldn't have done that. The mountain was already there. Our peoples carved it when they were there. And they did it a very long time ago because they carved the thing out of a mountain. Okay, I want to reiterate that. So they carved it with a, the face of a batwa, Bantu, and a lion body. If we look at Batwa, we also looking at Bashwa, who is also known as Bess, as we've seen in another lesson. Well, why am I saying all these things? Well, because obviously, as we recall, Bess being the first in the land, Bessie Batwa, were known as the people of iron and also the people who created flames. Well, obviously, they had to have tools to carve out a mountain again, and those tools were made of iron. So they're showing that when we did this, we carved it in the image of not only the most sacred people, but the most sacred image of the people. Now, why was it sacred? Well, we have to look at the customs. In the lineages of the kings and queens to Burundi, to uh, Banyawanda and other peoples, and I keep mentioning those two because those are the two uh, peoples that I'm going to key on. If we look at the traditions um, specifically Burundi, they name their kings in a succession of animal symbols. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this tradition goes back farther than any date we can even put. So another reason they try to put the date of the so-called Sphinx or Horm Akkad or whatnot, they try to give you whatever it is, what, 3000, 2000 B.C., whatever they try to give you. The reason why they try to do that is they're, they're, they're trying to make sure everything stays with the origin of civilization being in Iraq and Mesopotamia and all that B.S. So get that out of your mind. Let's get back to what our people are telling us. Our animal symbols that were passed from family to from generation to generation they went in a succession. You had the symbol of the lion. You had the symbol of the, um, I want to say the leopard. You had the symbol of the crocodile. You had symbol of different animal, uh, animalistic symbols that represented what each generation or each family uh, section was going to be in the lineage of those people. We can see the same thing in Babimba when we look at their uh, kings calling themselves Nguena which means the alligator kings and the people celebrating Ukusefya Pangwena, which is representing the founding of their people and their land. This has always been our tradition. So I say that because the lion is one of the most significant parts of that statue. And if we look at the Kenyawanda word for lion, we get entare, N-T-A-R-E, entare. Well, that should explain itself in itself. This statue was built during one of the family lineages of the entire or the lion. Then, if we look at what is atop that lion, we have a head of a Batwa Bantu, African. Well, what is the Kenyawanda word for head? Umutwe. M-T-W-N-T-R, the so-called Medjunetur, is actually Umutwe Ntare, which means the head of the king 
or the head of the lion. Has nothing to do with the language. If you overstand our customs and traditions, you know for a fact that that is a falsification, be it deliberate. I'm going to say deliberate because white folks supposed to be the ones to have translated this hieroglyphic medjunetta. So they couldn't have done it with your best interest in mind. But even to this day, the words umutwe and tare means the head of the king or the head of the lion. Well, look at the statue and that in itself will explain itself. That's why I said that when I explain Metuneta, it's going to lead me into the Horam Akit. Well, we have to realize Bantu in itself, the language, is spoken by peoples all over Kukongo. Well, another people who were in the land were Amazulu. Why do I say that? <laughs> I don't. Amazulu say that. Amazulu said they came from the areas that you now know as the Sahara Desert. And then they left and were pushed southward when the drought came. Now, look at how long ago the drought to create the Sahara into what it is. Look at how long ago that drought occurred. And you will have an idea of how long Amazulu has have been in the south. But the problem is with that, there have been many different droughts. If you study climatology, you will see that the Sahara was not in its current state as a desert this whole entire time that we're talking about our story. It had been an oasis at one point, and even before then it had been a desert. And even before then it was another oasis, and even before then it was a desert. So there was during a specific desert period, doesn't mean it was the last one, that Amazulu were in the north in Chicoma, and they came south to KwaZulu right now that we know. So this could have been hundreds of thousands of millions of years ago. We don't know that. But Amazulu said that's where they came from. And you look on the carvings and the paintings and the caves and you will see Amazulu with the Asagai spears up on the walls. So they are not lying. Why do I say that? Because as well, the statue represented something to Amazulu. And you look at the term Horem Akit. They try to tell you HR as you again, Heru in the horizon. Again, as I said, Heru has nothing to do with us. But if we're looking at Heru and Horizon, obviously we're talking about something cosmologically. And we're specifically talking about the sun. Well, that HR, I'm sorry, does not mean Heru. It does not mean Hor. The M, I'll go ahead and explain that because that in itself is a conjunction word. And then Akit, if you know anything about, you know, our languages, Bantu languages all throughout, uh, specifically East Zulu Bantu right here, Akit deals with time. And it deals with, yes, the horizon, but it means something specific about the horizon. So that word hor em akit, if we look at it in Isizulu, we're looking at hor being mhla or hla. Well, why is hor mhla? Well, in Isizulu, there's no R. The pronunciation of the R is L. So if you want to say mhra or mhla, that means the day. And that means daytime. That means the time of the sun up. It means when the sun starts to first emerge. That is mhla. And then you look at that m akit. That is actually one word. And in Isizulu, that would be pronounced imikati. The word kati, all throughout Bantu, represents time. The rising of the sun when it passes from the ground to the sky through the horizon. We're looking at Kati where it divides because there is a point during sunrise where the sun touches both the ground and the sky and the horizon. And that is when they say it emerges. It is born. It is the new day. It comes up. So the whole entire word Hor Em Akit actually translates to Mhla Imikati. And what that means is the day appears in the horizon or before horizon came about to us it was more specifically the day that appears and the space between the earth and the sky and this is indicative of why the monument was built and that was an eternal calendar or an eternal clock for our people so 
Not only does Umutwe and Tari explain what it is, but Mlaimikati explains why it is. Do you understand?